Hello friends, welcome to this first module of learning Hadoop or Big Data. Okay, you must you have enrolled for this course, so that means you want to know about Hadoop or Big Data. You must be having knowledge that yes, there is a term Big Data or Hadoop which is going popular these days. More and more engineers, software engineers are switching their career job towards Hadoop or Big Data. As this course teaches about the introduction to Hadoop, that what is it all about, what components are there, and basic how we work with Hadoop or Big Data. Okay, now let's, in the first module, instead of teaching of Hadoop, let's make you more motivated for learning Big Data or Hadoop. I'm using here Hadoop and Big Data by changing their names and terms. Don't be confused. In the later end section, I will be talking in detail what actually is Hadoop, what actually is Big Data. And you will be having clear understanding what they are. Okay. So just off now, let's study what are the benefits of Hadoop. Is it good for our career? Am I learning this course? Is it good? Will it help me in the near future? Okay. So, and I will be teaching from the both perspective. Either you are a developer or you are a tester. As this course mainly focuses for the testers. Okay. And the developers both. Because it is an introductionary course. Everyone who wants to enter in this Hadoop or Big Data care job profile needs to go through this course okay so the first is that the hadoop is in java okay now if you have been a software engineer 90 percent of the software engineers know one common programming language that is java okay if you have learning with different programming languages also definitely you know the object oriented what is object oriented programming and hadoop is built in Java so all those people who have been working in Java all those testers who have been working on Java they can easily switch their career and move to big data okay so it is a very easy job to learn Hadoop if I talk to about software testers yes for let me first talk about automation testers for automation testers, the most, uh, I can say, the boom tools are Selenium and APM for mobile automations, web automation. And these are also mainly, like can say, about 95% of the coding in these tools are done in Java. Though they support other languages, but mostly companies prefer Java only. Okay. So, the QA also knows Java. So, it is very easy to switch from selenium or apm from automation testers to hadoop testers the reason is uh, our market is always changing okay if i talk about 10 years back if i talk specifically about testing or development they were it was only manual testing then it comes web testing then it comes mobile testing so you have to continuously learn in order to increase your skills if you want to have higher pay grades if i have been a manual tester or if you think that i will i will start job as a manual tester and will retire as a manual tester then definitely your pay would be low okay in comparison to other persons because it is getting new tools new features and you have to learn them so if I talk about around two to three years back, Selenium, let's say Selenium uh, and APM, they were on great boom. Okay, but now I can say majority of the testers are learning these tools. So the pay grade effect, okay, the higher amount of pays which were pay was paid to these automation testers is declining because of the huge quantity of automation testers so if you want to earn more you have to learn more okay so the next step which i can suggest you after this automation is hadoop go for the hadoop testing 
okay next uh, and uh, don't be uh, disheartened if you don't know java okay if you are a developer definitely it's mandatory for you to have java if you want to learn hadoop but suppose if you are a manual tester and you don't have the knowledge of hadoop or i can say if you don't have the knowledge of java okay then how it will work actually hadoop is one software and it is work with integration of other softwares we call it as a hadoop ecosystem which will be studying in the later uh, modules so in the hadoop ecosystem there's various components so working with some components you don't need java like we have hive pig so for working with them you don't need the knowledge of java okay so if you're going with the hadoop it is not that you need to learn java okay there are some components there are some fields which you can work on without the knowledge of java also without having the knowledge of programming there are some modules in hadoop if you are have the sql knowledge you can work you have an you can have a career with the hadoop with the sql knowledge okay so actually hadoop it's a not hadoop it's not a word it's a hadoop ecosystem it's a component integration of various modules okay so okay now if you're going to hadoop i'm saying that you don't know the knowledge of java then why not learn it java is not so hard to learn it's a very easy and uh, in your career you have been uh, at least there have comes many times where you regret that you don't know java okay so it is good to at least know java i'm not saying to learn the whole java at least the basic principles of java that we call it as object oriented programming so a good news we will be covering the basic java in our course go towards the end of the course we have covered some java tutorials from the starting for the basic knowledge okay so go through that java so it is all the java which will be needing with starting of the hadoop okay java it's not a tough language it will be needing uh, only four to five days and of uh, of your studying and definitely will be perfect in java it's not so hard okay you just have to make your mind that you have to learn java now the next is our market needs urgent needs of testers and big data developers okay many big companies like google yahoo uh, these adobe these are companies are investing huge amount in big data if you are learning or heard this term big data now then you are very back in terms of knowledge how our software industry is growing big data has come to a market about several years back four to five years back company are investing have invested huge amount since these years this hadoop has grown to has come up with various versions companies are integrating their softwares with this hadoop so we are back if you are learning this hadoop right now the market of hadoop has started about four to five years back and what i can say it's going exponentially yes it is going exponentially there are huge amount of jobs companies are willing to pay anything for an experienced developers or testers you have and the main benefit is you have the knowledge of hadoop they will hire you okay suppose i am working in a project and i need a hadoop java tester I know Java uh, Hadoop is new in the market, so I won't be getting so much skilled resources. So, if a person who has instead of hiring a fresher, there is another guy who has some introduction to Hadoop as a knowledge of Hadoop, then definitely I will be hiring him. So that's the main benefit of Hadoop. Okay, more freshers are learning this Hadoop and are going to this career. Why not you? you are in software industry okay you have knowledge of how software industry works 
if you have hadoop also so definitely you get hired and definitely you will be paid more these companies are paying more to these persons okay because it's new technology new domain okay and uh, if you have been working with the small companies and you have always a dream that you want to be work with big mnc's companies then then hadoop is what you need okay because hadoop or a big data is generally implemented by the big companies the it giants company okay it it normally not uh, undertaken by a small company of 50 or 100 people because it requires a huge investment if you are properly working with hadoop then a huge investment is required okay hadoop software is needed for the companies you have huge amount of data okay huge amount of the data these are the big clients so definitely they hire a big uh, software industries to work with them okay because this is a market of money okay this tool makes clients to earn more so definitely money making is always paid higher if you talk about sales team what the sales guys do they make uh, bring projects to the company so company pay more to them so it's the similar case with the hadoop it's a type of software which predicts if uh, let me it predicts everything hadoop or big data predicts everything okay so the person who are working with definitely will be paid more so it's a very wise decision you have made earlier that you want to move to the hadoop yes it's a future of tomorrow it is paid tomorrow and what i can say in a near future uh this market is growing so vastly uh i think it will be a necessity that you need to have knowledge of hadoop because you will get your data from here you will be sending data here there are lot of things going in hadoop right now okay this is a introductory course we'll be talking about the hadoop basics big data basics how they actually work what are the benefits etc etc okay but if you want to go for the advanced courses then you will came to know that it's very vast it's not a hadoop which i am talking about later it's an ecosystem various component softwares are built which are being integrated with the hadoop and it is now being called as a hadoop ecosystem because it has gone so vast okay so these are all the benefits of going hadoop as your career okay so welcome to this course and try to go complete the whole course and if you don't have the knowledge of java it's not needed for going of this course java is not required i repeat java is not required for this course but it is a skill if you want to make hadoop in, as your career java is required okay so that's why go to the end of the section and learn java maybe you can learn java at the end of the course when you have completed this course then you can go for the java but go for it okay so that's all once again welcome to the course thank you hello friends welcome to this module in this module we will be learning about what actually is big data it's not hadoop it's big data what we'll be learning here as the word itself speaks big data means a large amount of data in the recent times the amount of data has exponentially increased okay we are producing data everywhere just consider your life your social life how much of data you are daily producing on social media either it will be tw on twitter facebook your linkedin profile or online blogging you are producing data okay now every person in the world is producing some data was this situation 10 years back no so the amount of data which is being generated has ex increased exponentially 
Let us take an example of a floppy disk. Around 20 years back, the floppy disk was our main storage. Okay, there was no CD or hard disk, it was the floppy disk. The capacity of the floppy disk was just some KBs. So if we are able to save a notepad file on a floppy disk, it was an achievement. Okay, we used to share the notepads and mini files on the floppy disk. But do you have a floppy disk reader on your device now, on your laptop or desktop? Do you have a floppy? No. Now, you may not even find the hard disk drive and hard disk with you. Because the amount of data storage has increased. Okay. Previously, there about 20 years back, the laptop would used to come with around 100 GB of space. It changed. After 5 uh, years, it comes around 500 GB. Now, 1 TB, 2 TB is the common hard disk storage in a laptop which is coming. So, the storage capacity is increasing. This the reason is the reduce in the price of the hard disk, the storage, because our hardware R and D is preparing devices, have invented devices so that we can store the information, store the data cheaply on storage devices. Because of this boom. We are storing everything now. I remember around 10 years back, if I have been watching a movie, after watching a movie, I just delete it or I watch the movies in hard in CD, then I remove the CD, I don't save it. Now, if I'm saving a movie, I have a separate hard disk and I spark those movies in that hard disk, so maybe in the future I want to see those. I don't delete anything. I hardly remember I am deleting any data from my computer on my personal computer. I just cop if the data is not needed, I am just parking the data in a separate location or a hard disk. But I am not deleting it. That maybe in future I will be needing it. The reason is the storing of that data has become very reduced. Okay, so now we ask what I'm telling here the big data is that now we are generating huge data. Okay, uh, let me talk about any movie, let's say Titanic. Can you imagine how many copies of Titanic must be stored in computers? Lacks of copies of Titanic must be stored on uh, computers. Is it worth that storing the single copy to so many systems? No, it's not worth, but it is actually happening. So many amounts of tons of uh, storage is being wasted for storing of these movies. So, it's a called big data. We are producing so much big data. Data is increased and the storage price is reduced. So, there are two reasons why the big data is there. The first is storage price is reducing and the another one is the time to fetch that data is also reduced. Okay, now there comes two perspective of this. One is if some of my data is on a hard disk then I can quickly get it within a few seconds. It's not that it has to take a hour or a day to get my data, no. Secondly, it's called distributed. Suppose, this is my computer and this is my data comp 1 data comp 
data com three. Okay. Suppose I want to get some data. The first is this data is stored on the net. The first point is that the amount of time if I want to fetch this data from the net has reduced, has reduced very much. Now I can copy a file, uh, a movie from the internet in just few seconds. Within a minute, I must be can download the movie on my system. I can watch the movie online. The speed has reduced. Also, distributed programming that is distributed storage. I can copy this file from three systems. Okay, some of the file was stored here. Some part of the file was stored here. Some part of a file was stored here. Consider if the whole file was stored here, then it was taking nine minutes. Okay, now. I have three parts of the file located on three systems. Now I am fetching these all three files at the same time. That is parallel processing. So each will take three minutes. So I will be getting my data in three minutes now instead of nine. So this is parallel programming. You must have seen that when you are do downloading some data, uh, you use when you use download manager. It's download it's not download from the starting it is downloading here 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 if it's a bar okay let's say if it's a bar of a downloading progress then you must have seen that some downloading is doing here some downloading is doing here some downloading it is doing because that way the parallel processing comes into the picture and data is downloaded into 3x 4x 5x speeds but that is the parallel pr processing so these two reasons, the first, the storage price of devices have reduced plus the time to process that data. The processing of the data is much faster now. Okay, so these two changes in the IT industry has given boom to the rise of this big data. Okay. Now, when we have to handle this big data, the we were using a conventional databases okay now what are a conventional databases you have heard about oracle okay that is databases microsoft database these are the databases which you are know about mysql etc so we were storing these data into these conventional databases but now the data has become so large okay now we are producing so much data its size is increasing, its type, we are now getting different type of data, which will be talking. It's not that only we are getting, we are getting picture, images, now we are getting different types of data and also the speed of fetching that data. These are the three terms. Okay. So, our conventional databases was not able to help with these three terms, size, type and velocity. Okay. So, the data which cannot be handled by these old databases is called as big data. Okay, suppose you have 100 movies and you are able to perfectly manage 100 movies on your let's say 5 hard disks, 1 hard disk, then it's not a big data because the data you which you can easily manage its size, velocity and type is not a big data you have a records of let's say thousand of people and you can easily manage in your SQL in my SQL then it's not a big data but definitely if it gets to be handling the data of your country the whole population their medical history their financial records it's a huge data and Maintaining that record in a MySQL would be a huge task. Okay, so that is termed as a big data. Because the amount of data these days, the amount of data which we are producing has gone beyond limits and our conventional databases are not able to handle them properly. MySQL is not able to handle so much big data okay so this amount of data is called as big data 
where my conventional databases are failing is termed as big data. There is not a specific limit of data or type of data which we say that no, now this data has become a big data. I was having a hundred movies, it was not a big data, but now I have a thousand movies, it has a become data. So it depends upon person to person. Suppose you have one TB of hard disk and you are able to store your data into it, it's not a big data. But if you have one TB of hard disk and you want to store 10 DB of data into it, definitely it will become a big data for you. Okay. So big data is the large amount of the data which we are generating now, which cannot be handled now with our conventional databases or storage devices is termed as big data as the name suggests. That is the big data which we are producing. There is not a specific limit of it, but the data which cannot be handled in terms of its size, the velocity by which we can fetch the data, the type of the data which we can store is termed as big data. Okay. I hope you have got a rough idea what the big data is. We will be continuing this module in the next session so we will get what exactly big data and how we are generating this big data. Okay. Hello friends. Welcome to this session. In the previous module we have studied about what actually big data is. That is the data which is big as the word states. The reason is that in previous years the data was roughly the text files, excel files, word files, songs and some videos. But now the data is changing. The data, you have so many log files which is being produced daily. Your CCT footage which is coming, your satellite and there are other big data which will be talking in the later modules. Okay, but the world is changing. The world is changing. We have smartphone these days. Have you checked that how much data you are producing daily with the smartphones? On different apps, you are doing some activities, whether you are buying, you are selling, you are surfing, you are commenting, you are generating the data. That data is not going wasted. It is saved there. So definitely the data which is saving and which is going huge is termed as big data. Now let's study that how this big data works or how there is a need of big data and how it actually works with the help of an example with the sh shopkeeper. Okay, so this is a shop. This is my shop and I sell items, let's say food products. Okay, so person visit my shops person visit my shop and I sell them okay but I have built a website now and I'm selling my items online as well okay so my customer is increasing and I need to now store more products because my, my business is going good so I filled my shop now the Christmas is coming, Diwali is coming and another festivals are coming and my business has also increased exponentially. I need more data, need more food. I have filled my shop now. Now I need more. So what I do, I buy some store here. I increase my shop and make a store here and keeping the data here. But what now if I need more space? I cannot just go and buy some shops. It's pretty expensive for me. I can buy a shop. I can increase this shop, but it would be very expensive for me. So what I go, I go and contact a Godan. Okay. And I ask him, hey Godan, I need some space to keep my food items. Okay. For some storage, I will pay you this. If that storage increased, I will pay accordingly. So Godam says, okay, I will allocate you this store. Go and save your items here. 
I was very happy. But in the next time, my necessity of space increases. So I again ask the Godam, hey Godam, I need more space. So Godam allocated me more space. So my business is going well. Okay. So this Godam is actually handling big data. Okay, you see, so this Godam must be storing, let's say, uh, clothing items for this shop. Okay, uh, it's grains for another shop or some other else. So this, this storage location, big storage location is storing different varieties of uh, products and for different persons. So if we talk about a learning language it is a big data okay and what we call it we call it as a data center it is a data center which is storing the data if you talk about an IT field and that data is called as big data okay because th this data has increased in size and variety so we are calling it a big data and this place is called a data center okay so now back to our example so this is how the shop and go down works you must have seen that when so let's say suppose you want to go in a shop to buy a footwear you like the footwear but it is of not your size it is of size 10 so you ask the salesman that hey I like this piece but it is not of my size so what the salesman will do he will just go and will inform you that hey I have checked my uh, storage we currently don't have this 10 number size in our shop but it is present in a good arm so if you can wait for 10 minutes I will send a person to fetch that piece for you so I am a happy customer it must have happened with you sometime so also this data center don't handle the data their responsibility is just to store the data okay suppose as I am doing an online business and now I want to ship this data ship some food item so I will ask this data center to fetch me that food item I won't ask this data center to pack this item and send it to some customer no there are some reasons okay which we may be covering when we'll be learning Hadoop so normally all the processing and fetching processing manipulation of data items is normally done at the local end we fetch the data from the data center and then process it at local end this is how it works so that's the concept of big data and this is how the big data is actually made okay now so that's all big data is large amount of data it can be any type of data which we are producing these days and this is how in the, in the present world we are generating so much huge data in the next session hope you have uh, already get an idea what a big data is it is a pretty simple term but uh, it has a lot of meaning itself in the next example we will be taking some uh, scenarios we can say how we are generating a big data with going through the scenarios you will get a clear picture oh that really is a big data okay so we'll get back to your next lecture thank you hello friends welcome in this session we will be learning that the huge data that is the big data where from it's actually coming okay so the first is social media we daily produce a huge data in social media in a form of tweets shared pics we comments we update our location we like we unlike we uh, uh, we have pages we have group functions 
we do a lot of things on social media and all those data is being stored you don't uh, suppose you have commented on on a file two years back you can sorry you can still go to that uh, image and you can find your comment okay because that all data is being saved so the major role in the big data is of social media okay share market share market is usually going up down with every share is fluctuating in seconds and all that information needs to be shared uh, safe for future transactions okay so share market is a huge uh, plays a huge role in generation of the data similarly as gps tracker you must be thinking the gps tracker when we are driving those produce a data but your mobile smartphones smartphones are the what i can say the leaders in generation of gps data okay you always put on your location in the on mode if you put it on off mode nearly half of your apps would be starting not uh, responding okay so your smartphone is continuously sending data to these apps and another stuff okay so your smartphones are the leaders in generation of gps tracker that is the gps data the share market it's again the healthcare record every user every user or every person has its health card and all that information is being saved on internet with corresponding its id persons go for an x ray or go for a blood report go for an emi now everything of these reports are online these reports are safe for future so health records are a major role of big data in developing big data if a person is undergone under an uh, undergone under a surgery or something then ecg is running 24 into 7 they are calculating uh, the patient vitals 24 into 7 which needs to be saved and generating a huge amount of data they saved it data for one or two days and then they calculate the average of its heartbeat and that data cannot be deleted it will be saved for future references so healthcare records generate a huge amount of big data satellite reports you must be aware that weather reports okay so what these satellites do these satellites are continuously rotating in its orbit and clicking pictures videos and generating data in every second huge amount of these v images are being clicked and that to high resolution images these images are studied to understand the weather and predict let's say that uh, it will be flood this year the volcano activity the sea and also you we can uh, we determine the terrorist activities how it is going on the border uh, traffic signals okay we are sending uh, let's say connections your cable connections report we have phones satellite phones which are in communication and all those communication needs to be saved so satellites produce a huge amount of data next are the sensors detector this sensors detectors has grown exponentially in last 5 years okay if i talked about your camera your uh, in your mobile camera you click some photos or some videos but if we talk about sensor detectors 
let me expand my horizon for this sensor detectors that it can be the camera cct footage is installed on your offices and your homes they are continuously recording they are producing so much huge data organizations have many cct cameras and they are continuously generating the data they are a huge source of big data government data this type of data is generated by the government it can be military it can be population it can be social whatever data it is but government organizations are producing a huge amount of data during an exam if let's say there is a government exam or any private exam can you consider so much huge data is being generated we have the papers sometimes manual or online papers then we have checking generating record for each student online if i say if we talk about let's say india in india uh, there is engineering exam conducted every year after the exam for every student a report is generated its marks are saved for corresponding subject and reports are generated now consider that report is being generated for thousand lakhs of students so it generate a huge data okay we have topo sheets geographical location maps online which are producing a huge amount of data news it's a big source now in before world there should be paper news but now every news is online you will find a few homes only where you are still getting the paper news now everyone prefer the apps and usually open their app in the morning to see what today's hot news also the benefit of e news comes that you can be aware what is happening during the whole day it's not that you will be updated the next day so that's the benefit of e news you will find a huge amount of on your facebook and twitter you will finding a lot of links coming this happened this happened these and references to your news websites in the form of blogs okay and these all information is being saved see what we have been studying here is that the information is not neglected this amount of data or information is being saved i will correct myself it's not the information it's the data okay because the refined data is known as information so here what we are getting is data so that is we are generating big data e-commerce websites okay let's say talk about amazon okay in amazon there are thousands of products listed and can you imagine how many images have been listed for every product some of the products you may find thousand of reviews when you purchase any item amazon let's a single website is storing your every record what you have viewed in previous 10 years what you have ordered from the amazon so all this record is being saved by e-commerce websites which is a huge which is really huge you think for a product maintaining let's say 100 reviews it's a really a big task generating the profile for all of its users it's it's a data and it's a very huge data reviews which we covered okay cell phone records cell phone is always generating records okay whether it's your bug report whether it's your mobile logs uh, whether it's your sensors have you seen just go on your mobile settings and under the app where all your apps are listed you, where you will find cache memory okay every app is generating some data and that is being stored in cache memory so during the course of the time this memory is keep on increasing and increasing you can just refresh also but 
it will show you how this memory is being use a app uh, for a month for a social networking app uh, for a month and see its cache memory it will be huge it goes in mb within the days okay 10 mb 15 mb 100 mb within a day that's a huge amount of memory okay and the others will be taking some in detail to understand better okay there are others also but uh, these are the simple one which we can you can also see yes we are generating the huge data was this data present in let's say five to six years or ten years back no all of this data was handled paperly oh sorry on paper <laughs> So that's that's the reason the data has grown exponentially and before these why we are naming as this big data not data because the reason that before the data was in excel used to in excel table rows okay these data was simply saved in rdbms that is relational database system that is a conventional database system which in which we can store data in the form of rows and columns but now the data which we are generating is are not just excel and some uh, data which can be saved in rows and columns we have images we have sound we have videos we have logs we have reports we have flat files these cannot be saved in the rows and columns so definitely our conventional rela relational database system that is rdms fails in case of big data and we need an another tool which can handle our this big data so i, I repeating myself the conventional databases cannot handle our big data okay this is a data measurement chart that how the data is increasing or the units of data what we can say before the starting is bit byte you all must know you have heard of kilobyte meg megabyte gigabyte and maximum to terabyte you must have heard till here okay but now the data has increased this big websites this big organizations don't talk about terabytes we have petabytes and exabytes okay because they are generating so huge amount of data they are another also six to seven terms i don't think we have reached there but let's say in 15 to 10 years they would be very common but if we talk about today the common terms are petabyte and exabytes let me show you how the petabytes look like uh, let's say one petabyte storage okay uh, this one see this whole rack this whole rack comprises of one petabyte now consider the let's say a website which is generating one petabyte daily so they require this much of space daily so storing this much of whole rack amount of data daily definitely that is a big data and this data is keep on in, is increasing increasing okay so we have reached petabyte and exabyte which itself is huge okay so that was all that from where we are generating this data and is this data generation is increasing as we are speaking also okay and which will be a huge concern in later uh, let's say after a few years okay so we have our tools to manage this data let's see how efficiently they can cope up with the new data which is being added daily and daily okay so let's move ahead thank you hello friends so now you are just aware what actually the big data is and from various sources we are generating the big data now let's go with some of the facts okay the real facts which uh, will tell you that how much data we are generating 
these facts are collected from internet from various sources okay so logically there is no stamp that they do exist but yes uh, the corresponding websites the authors have quoted them so we have made a new section regarding these facts okay so it says that first one that in last two years the amount of data generated has just doubled so when we talk about the exponential increase of the data we are generating it can be understood by this line that in two years the amount of data has just doubled okay so if in the world there was an x data the next year it was x in into x wow we are generating so much data so you can imagine if this ratio keeps on going so we would be finding difficult to put uh, find space for putting up this data <laughs> okay now over 1 billion facebook logins in a day okay so this data i don't think must have decreased will definitely when you are going through this course and reading this article it would have definitely been increased on the other hand okay i don't think the facebook uh, logins would have gone down instead they could have been increased okay this year 1 trillion yes 1 trillion photos uploaded and the year just next okay big data marketing is growing with the annual rate of 56 percent that's the main motivation for choosing big data as a carrier big data marketing is growing with an annual rate of around 58 percent that's a huge amount big data in health domain in us can save up two thousand dollars spent for each person annually so that's the survey by the us uh, that if in the health domain we use this big data for our records then for every person thousand dollars can be saved guys big data is we call as huge this data this data is huge but it is in demand because this is the data and what the information we can gain get of this big data has a huge value has a very huge value which will be studying in later modules this uh, suppose uh, you have some data let's say your employee data okay so your employee data you are able to know that when person takes leave and etc suppose you can access my facebook account twitter account linkedin account you have all my details and now if you can make a uh, pattern out of it that when i upload the videos when i upload the facebook uh, uh, photos when i chat with persons when i get ill so if you can understand these patterns of a user you can rule the world you know how the, your user a person behaves so similarly in case of healthcare industry if if a, if a health company knows how how it was my health how my vitals were from my childhood when i was an infant till today that is 30 years of 40 years of my age then they can make out that they can predict that what is the best medicine for this person is what are the chances that this person might be affected with so they can take the precautionary measures so a study says that if these big data is introduced in a healthcare domain that it can save up two thousand dollars for each person which is being spent by the u.s government and it's itself speaks a lot that how much money if we invest some in big data then the returns are very very huge okay so company sellers using big data to understand their customer can double their revenue now how these companies and sellers using big data 
for the increased revenue which will be studying as a separate module okay but uh, just that the companies which have started using the big data big data was around five years back but uh, the companies who have adopted big data so they have started showing progress from their competitors because then then these companies knows their customers well what the people want and other stuff and their sales have increased okay so if you are marketing doing marketing selling your products with the facts you have received from big data then you can double your revenue so companies are using big data we will be taking it as a separate topic how they are doing it white house has invested nearly 200 million in big data projects not a sure fact but i have heard that these big uh, that the countries like india america so when they invest uh, a major amount in big data during the camping they analyze the data the person's data of big uh, that is the big data and analyze will their party would be winning or losing okay so pre they they get all this data freely with the help of big data they get this data from Twitter, Facebook, polls, etc. Fetch all this data, what the persons are talking about, and they can predict at which comp which political party would be in ruling state. Okay. Every minute, three hundred hours of video is uploading on YouTube. YouTube is the main video streaming website which contains your videos. So I myself spent uh, hours, at least one or two hours daily on YouTube. Instead of reading the news, I just go to the YouTube and just surfing the videos. So, and the popularity can be seen that in every minute, 300 hours of videos being uploaded. I just imagine where this uh, YouTube has been saving all those videos. <laughs> every minute we upload 2 lakhs. Oh my God. 2 lakhs of photos on Facebook every minute we are talking about. Okay. If you burn all of one day data generated into DVD, okay, then you can make stack of them and reach moon twice. <laughs> and we are talking the amount of data generated in only one day. Okay. In every minute, 500 websites are being published. Land occupied by data sensor centers will be nearly equal to 6,000 football fields. This is the current scenario. With the type of huge data we are generating, as I said earlier, I am afraid that where we will be putting these more data centers. NSA is thought to analyze 1.6% of all global internet traffic around 30 petabytes each day. They analyze this amount of data. 30 petabytes. You just uh, imagine that. I've shown you that uh, one rack of petabytes. So how NSA is analyzing 30 petabytes. So all that data that is being stored, it's huge. Number of bits of information stored in digital universe is thought to exceed count of stars in real world. We talk about that the number of stars in the world is infinite. Okay, so what we are saying is we have generated so much of data that if we break it into bits, okay, if we break it into bits, then we have exceeded the count of the stars. Airbus generated nearly 650 terabyte in every 30 minutes of flight. Now, from where these uh, flights are generating data, actually when a flight is uh, running, it's flying, so they are in continuously in communication with the nearest tower and they are sending its location to it and getting all the reports, what is the weather report, wind, etc. all this. So, in 
30 minutes they generate this much amount of data so considering so many year versus and the hours of flight we can imagine so many petabytes or exabytes daily we are being produced okay so some of the facts which are shared by ibm that over 50% population of uh, us population owns a smartphone 10 billion devices will be used by 2020 you see the huge increase in the smartphones why i say smartphones because the amount of data generated with smartphones and big data they are directly proportional the more smartphones you have the more data you are being generated through your apps through your social media through your gps trackers and another the number of smartphones increases with the number of users 294 billion emails sent every day over 1 billion google searches every day that's why it's google it's sending so many requests and never getting down right 30 plus petabytes of user generated data stored accessed and analyzed 30 petabytes that is 30 racks that is one room daily 230 plus million tweets each day and all is getting that is being saved I think the petabytes would be soon over and we will be talking about much higher memory uh, sooner because the amount of data we are talking about is huge one minute hundred videos definitely that's a huge amount okay so these are the facts which are actually happening in the world and they are producing a huge amount of data you go in any field and a huge data is being produced and this is the source of big data now you must be having the clear picture what actually the big data is it is not the your movies and uh, uh, videos and comments which comprises of big data but if we talk about satellites aeroplanes or smartphones everything is adding to big data okay so i think it's pretty much you have got a real view what the big data is all about okay so let's move to the next uh, topics thank you so now you know that what actually the big data is from all various sources where this data is coming from and the actual facts that yes this big data is being generated now considering uh, yes we know the big data now there is a field for big data testing as well if it's a huge scope so just some liners that they for the testing guys that big data is an emerging field and as per the reports there is a huge shortage of big data developers and testers okay because it's a new field and it's a big field which can consume a lot of resources okay it's not that simple a language that uh, some we will every a company needs five to six employees no every project if say a big data project needs a huge amount of resources to work on okay this domain is growing very fast and a huge companies big companies big clients are actually investing a lot of money because the return what we get out of big data is huge okay it's a huge profit when we uh, if a company's uh, let's say e-commerce company applies a big data the amount of investment as a profit they receive after applying big data is great so it's an investment in the initial phases and companies are investing okay yes for learning if your tester uh, java is essential but if you still don't know java uh, you can go with the big data testing as there are many tools which the Hadoop needs doesn't require Java so at the end of the course there will be a Java tutorial from the basics so you just go through it this course doesn't recommend or does not need Java knowledge but still it is good if you are going into this big data or Hadoop domain so you will be needing Java in future uh, one line which I can quote is big data requires big testing and hence it's a big job.
okay as we say it's we are talking about big 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 so definitely a big testing it's required and definitely your paycheck would also be a big not in the future but currently what i can say if you go through the course and apply for some big data uh, star company then definitely the paycheck as per the current market scenario will be huge okay because company want those people who have knowledge of big data and hadoop previously you know big data but as the verse says that the when data is used but now after going through these modules you have the exact picture of big data you know seem to be understanding yes this is a problem with so much data we are generating satellites aircrafts okay so when you will go through the course you will be able to know more details about what is hadoop and other details okay so thank you hello friends so just a short video about the big data we have seen what big data actually is now what is a tool okay how to handle this big data so apache hadoop is the most accepted tool in big data so hadoop is actually the tool which is maintaining big data okay so as we know the big data is a large amount of data the word big resembles itself so so today storage capacity has become too large and continuous up upgradation of data that a traditional management system cannot handle it so we need hadoop to uh or we what fiction we need hadoop to manage our big data okay for retrieving it for storing it for manipulating it we need hadoop so cloudera what is cloudera cloudera is the mostly an enterprise solution to help business manage their hadoop ecosystem i have give you brief introduction about this before also detail we will be studying it later on when we talk about hadoop Hadoop is just a one software but now this has evolved now many companies many uh, softwares have been developed which works in an integration with the hadoop so, so which can add more values to hadoop so combinedly it is called a hadoop ecosystem so cloudera cloudera is a enterprise solution so if you want to work with hadoop cloud you just need to install the cloudera okay because handling so much of uh, integrations of softwares with hadoop it's really a task grid good task with and a time consuming task so cloudera manages all this at its own ends and provide you a business solution to work with the hadoop okay so big data is a large amount of data Hadoop is the tool to manage the big data and Cloudera is the enterprise solution for managing their Hadoop ecosystem. So these are the three words you should be aware of. Okay? So it was a small session but just telling you what these three terms are. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. So in this session we will be talking about Hadoop that is for handling of big data. versus our conventional databases right microsoft sql oracle and others now what we know one thing that our conventional databases cannot handle big data because conventional databases can handle big data in a form of rows and columns but in case of big data we have a variety of data that is we have images we have videos we have log files we have flat files we have text files a lot of data is there we have just logs plain files so these type of data cannot be handled by our relational database systems so there is a hadoop for handling of big data now let's see some of the differences between the hadoop and the conventional databases that hadoop is distributed on various machines okay data sorry data is distributed on various machines in hadoop okay so what i mean is that in case of conventional databases this is a database and you handle fetch query store data with the this process okay from here in case of hadoop 
data is not it is a single machine in case of it is a single machine but in case of Hadoop it follows a distributed programming that is <coughs> sorry guys this is a user and this is machine 1 machine 2 machine 3 machine 4 so in case of Hadoop the data is distributed that is if this was your data it was divided into two parts three parts so this part was stored on this machine and this machine this data was stored in this machine and this machine this machine and this machine so the data is distributed over a network of machines not on a single machine also the copies are kept so that in case of a failure how this is actually done we'll be studying in the later chapters the later modules that how actually this storage is there and how we handle it in case of Hadoop. but just understand that in case of conventional databases we use a single machine but in case of Hadoop a distributed network of machines is being used and data is braked and stored and made copies and its copies are made and saved on different machines that is connected to machines okay so <clears throat> that's we what we're talking about data is distributed on various machines in Hadoop once data is written cannot be modified while in conventional databases data can be modified at many times yes in case of let's say you are using SQL uh, MySQL so you send SQL queries there is an update query for the SQL so you send the update command and you can update the databases while in case of Hadoop the data which is saved here cannot be manipulated okay you have to fetch this data to your local and you have to update and you have to save at some another location maybe this or another but this data suppose it was having two now you cannot update it and store value two data updation is not possible and there is a reason the data should never be updated at the data center this is what this is what the data center so there are many reasons that data should be it should be avoided for manipulating of the data at the data center it should be fetched to the local and then the updation should be there okay so Hadoop does not support SQL like conventional databases but we have now in our Hadoop ecosystem some tools where we use SQL type queries <coughs> leave it uh, for let's say second phase second uh, part of the course maybe some Hadoop advanced course but just now for the uh, introduction course just keep in mind that Hadoop does not support SQL like conventional databases to fetch and receive data okay and Hadoop is not a single tool okay so my SQL and these are a single tool but Hadoop is not a single tool it's a framework but it's a collection of open source framework which is continuously evolving what I mean to say is this is Hadoop okay so Hadoop so there are other, other open source framework as well let's say someone is here another tool is connected here another tool is here another tool is here which talks to this tool okay this is tool one some name pig uh, let's say map reduce something okay you will be understanding later courses later modules so first this Hadoop was developed and it is also continuously new versions are coming but later on uh, we identified some tools that maybe addition of something like this will help the Hadoop and it adds the ext added functionality in the Hadoop so someone developed this someone developed this so this ecosystem it's a big ecosystem comprises of various open source frameworks and it is developing so we call it as a Hadoop ecosystem 
so a person who knows hadoop will never say hadoop he will say a hadoop ecosystem if he is talking about whole of the frameworks and nowadays we work with hadoop ecosystem not just the hadoop okay so that's all that's the four main pointers difference between hadoop and conventional databases if you are going for an interview uh no it's a very famous question you will be asked is that what is the difference between hadoop for handling big data and conventional databases so just go through for us these four points and tell the interviewer and he would be impressed by these are all the differences okay so that's all for this thank you hello friends welcome to this course and uh, this is the course which will be Uh, talking about why big data is so important we have learned what a big data is but uh, not know that why co huge companies and organizations are investing so much in big data the reason is they are making huge profit out of it whether it's an ngo or an organi government organization or it's a private company they are getting huge benefit either in terms of money or in terms of information so with the one line which explains the useful of big data is analytical report is the main area for which the big data has become a such a big word because the information what we are fetching out of this big data is really of a great value now let's go with some points which will uh, show what's the benefit of this data it helps to understand a customer behavior okay suppose i have a data of let's say 1 lakh people okay uh, i have my e-commerce website and i have data of 1 lakh people what benefit i can make out of it okay if i don't know them i can just send the mailer that new product is available on my website just buy it and etc that stuff so the sales would be yes will be there but so, let the another case where i know that out of those 1 lakh people when they are having a birthday when their uh, wife is having a birthday when let's say uh, when someone is going for the tour and they need these items I know that when they are appearing, let's say, for an exam, and they need these books. So, if I know this customer behavior and I shoot the mails to that person, okay, you are going for an outing. I know that this person has booked a ticket for the America in the winters. Okay, so I shoot a mail, going for the winters. Check these woolen clothes. So he would be buying. The probability that he would be buying would increase. so this is what big data helps it and helps us to understand <coughs> sorry guys help us to understand our customer behavior okay sorry the next one is it helps to identify the risk in healthcare domain fires travel routes weather elections you know now what these uh, political organizations have been doing they gather the big data the data from the polls the data from the internet the data from the social media the data from the newspapers they get all this data they analyze this data and they came to a situation which party is winning so before the elections they get a fair idea which party would be winning so that is how the big data works with the reports suppose there uh, is an, a natural calamity or a tsunami something so the one way is we check the satellite images and predict yeah this area is hit so much and other ways but so it can tell us tsunami was there but how much damage exactly it has done in the short period to tell this is really difficult but consider another case we are analyzing the data of satellite we are analyzing the data of twitters the persons are tweeting that we have been hit i have been destroyed something like this with the hashtags 
we are checking the data from the various internet websites we are checking the phone calls records we are checking the phone messages we are collecting all this data and then we are predicting how much intensified that tsunami was how bad it had hit so big data is analyzing the data which is of huge quantity from various resources in the earlier method in the conventional method we can only compare or analyze the data which was in row and columns but in case of big data there is a variety of data and you can analyze this variety of data okay this is the big benefit of big data that in big data you can also analyze the tweets in comparison to satellite pictures you can analyze on the basis of videos images log files your gps tracker locations so is a wide variety which can be analyzed through big data so similarly fires in healthcare domain it's an open uh, big data is is in boom right now it's open what you can think of you can do it okay it's not that it's a predefined rules just suppose you are working in a big data and there comes that you have to uh, predict this or analyze this situation okay it's an open mind for you you have to give a thought okay suppose i have to do this task what type of data i would be needing from various resources what type of data i can get okay so it's an open mind you have to apply your brains to identify the source of big data okay to want to you want to predict analyze something first you have to get the data it's not that you get the data you have to also think about which data would be useful okay uh, let's say if i want to predict the weather the big data for the elections would be helpful no i have to get all the data which is related to the weather or the tsunami at that time not the elections data would be helpful for me so the data should be right so in the big data it's not the analyzing only you are doing you have to think about the data you want to get in order to generate the correct analytical reports okay so big data companies who have worked on big data reports are successful in their field big data has been with us since last few years so the companies who have invested in the big data are now making smart decisions with the reports of the big data have been seeing a growing in comparison to their successors competitor companies they are working good the reason is they are predicting well they have they speak on the they're taking decisions on the uh, reports they have with them the real reports it's not that okay uh, i'm a uh, company i do, it's i'm not making a decision okay christmas is coming let's buy this item or shoot this item to the persons no i check the reports of the last 4 years i check okay at christmas this product is real in sales boom let me buy this item so i am playing a show short game i am understanding my customers okay i am relating more towards the customers and e-commerce but the big data is not specific to e-commerce it can be in government like in weather reports elections so it's a huge scope but going under taking examples of the e-commerce website and profit makes you to understand much uh, clear so that's the reason okay so don't go that the big data is only helpful in case of e-commerce website or in the sales it's a one big area in which the big data is real helpful okay so compare yourself with the competitors with real reports that you have the big data suppose uh, there are two website one is the amazon and another is a flipkart so you take the big data you talk about uh, of a flipkart how much popular it is you take the amazon how popular it's you get the source from various social media news etc and you predict that which one is going better okay which products on which websites are going better so you can compare with those reports okay using big data cars can be designed with 
which can drive automatically yes it is being seen what is the big data suppose i am driving so automatically cars can be developed the reason i will be getting the data the weather conditions i will be getting the uh, road conditions i will be getting the respectively another car uh, location i will be getting the traffic location i will be getting uh the next person health condition how is driving so if i'm getting all this dry uh, data then i can make an automatic car which can drive on its own because it's know the road know the people where it has to travel okay <clears throat> so in healthcare also yeah so in healthcare also which has uh, which we have discussed uh, i think in the previous lectures as well in the healthcare the big data can this is a study in the us that did this, that if we include the big data in healthcare it can save nearly a thousand dollar on each person they have quoted like for the cancer patients they will have all the data of the patients they can analyze how the individual is and the respective specific treatment is done to the individual so which can really reduce the cost of the treatment and person can also be cured very fast so healthcare is the next branch in which big data can be really helpful okay now this is the, my favorite and i think you would be uh, more uh, get uh, can link how big data really is working suppose you have watch some videos on youtube or netflix okay and you then uh, close your browser or tv or anything next time when you again open that website youtube or netflix you will see the recommended videos okay uh, as per the movies you have watched as per the actors directors heroines whatever so what they do they track your history the history which you have been watching they keep tracks of all the users and respective to it they show the recommended videos to you okay so you see tracking of all those users so much big data is there on the daily basis and showing the recommended videos to each of them so that's a big part of big data okay let's me take some example okay so it would be google captures user data to determine what they are serving and then show as per user interest you must have been shocked sometimes that uh, uh, you are let's say you have gone to flipkart or amazon and you have been searching for an item you didn't buy it and you just close the browser the next few days when you are surfing the websites uh, so you will get the ad of that same product because google captures all the user data it's making its big data there and it is showing you ads corresponding your surfing so the probability of buying that increases okay so big data analyzing can really helpful for example there are let's say 20 trains running between uh, delhi and bangalore okay in india and the railway was going uh, no was not going in profit so what they do they capture the data of two years okay they analyze it and they found that usually in the morning the trains are going packed fully packed and the evening they are not uh, just able to be uh, let's say 20% booked so they came to an idea yes that we need more quantity of trains in the morning and reduce the number of trains in the evening okay this is the behavior of the user okay in case of let's say christmas the amount of trains needs to be increased from 20 to 40 because there are so much users maybe the it's morning or evening so analyzing this much data and then manipulating or changing the train timings railway timings 
will make you earn more profit that is make better decisions this is through the big data okay they capture the big data the the users who have booked the train what they are talking about uh, they receive the comments that uh, uh, the train xxs is uh, not good or something so if they are getting so much feeds or analysis from various resources then will think that this there is some problem with this train there can be n number of open thoughts which you can think about big data can be useful i have not applied this i have never worked on this but it's my thought you can thought n number of uh, variations big data can be helpful in making you better decisions okay satellite reports uh let's say agriculture or climate we take the uh, satellite reports uh, pictures and gather this big data from the another resources and check how climate is behaving this year compare it with the last years let's say 10 years data and predicting how it will be this year in case of war in case of agriculture so big data can be really helpful in many number of ways okay and these ways in term are making profit what we have discussed in agriculture more better decisions more profit railway better decisions better profit google more uh, respective ads to the users more buyers more profit youtube you are spending more time on the youtube because of the recommended videos healthcare as we discussed saving 1000 rupees per customer design uh, driver automatically automatically drives <laughs> everyone would love it when it would be there computer reports again business growth weather reports fire saving lives elections saving money okay customer behavior better earnings so you see that how big data is really helping us so i think you got uh, a clear picture how big data study is <coughs> sorry is helping these days and why it is in boom okay so it's an open you can think whatever you want to think how big data can be helpful in your personal as well in your business needs okay so that's all for this session thank you yes so in the previous session we have been learning about the type of uh, that big data is the data which is in huge quantity okay so and we also say that this is the type of the data which cannot be handled by our conventional databases that is rdms uh relational database database systems that is our microsoft sql etc so let's study that what type of data actually is in big data so we can categorize under into three uh, headings that is structured data semi structured data and unstructured data so structured data the data which can be handled by our conventional database systems okay like we uh, the sql which can be fetched through the sql command like you have the oracle or microsoft sql so uh, microsoft uh, sql so we use a sql language to communicate to fetch the data to create the table etc so all those data which was conventional used by conventional databases is come under the structured data so if we talk about this our conventional data only handle this type of data big data the be best of big data is that it can also handle these two type of data that is semi structured data the data which is semi structured with that is which not completely in the form of tables we know that the excel or the json file these are all hold the data and used in the communication network okay so they also hold data but do you think our rdms can hold this data no because it is not in the form of table and rows but still xml is the main source of data so our big data handle these type of semi structured data as well as well as the unstructured data 
the data which is being generated from social media that is when you are commenting you are sharing you are giving the status uh, you are uploading video images the log files when we are running a system the server logs any activity you are doing on your computer a log is being prepared for it your mobile logs so all these type of logs okay anything maybe some comments videos or anything which you can think of comes under this unstructured data we call unstructured because there is no relation between the data okay in case of structured definitely there is a relation rows and columns semi structured we because they are not fully structured like in xml there is a link but it is not a complete link in case of unstructured data definitely it is not linked or maybe a very minutely linked okay when you are using a gmail consider example when you are using a gmail a log for all your activities is being made so it does not have any link it is comes under unstructured data so the next point comes it waste of unstructured data in if we consider today's world nearly 10% of the data is structured that is that lies under it and 90% of the data comes under semi structured or unstructured data so if we have been using a conventional databases so we can only work with 10% of structured data we are wasting this 90% of the data so if there is a tool which can read this data prepare the analytic report can generate the information out of this data then you can imagine the information the feedback the useful information we will be receiving from this 90% data which is not being used so here comes the hadoop okay so let's read out but our conventional databases don't work on unstructured data okay and it was completely wasted but with the big data this data can be read and meaningful information can be gathered out of it so big data comes into the picture because of this unstructured data which is in today's world present in the majority and it is not being utilized properly so big data comes into the picture is to gather this information and to get the meaningful information out of it okay so i repeat again big data comprises of three types of data structured data semi structured and unstructured data the main benefit of hadoop uh, is it can read this unstructured data as well in comparison to our conventional databases okay so that's all for this session thank you hello friends so in the previous session we discussed about the type of the data which is constituting the big data now when we talk about big data we normally say it's a 3p board okay three v's okay now we what we can say we characterize big data as three v's but the two v's are now being developed or is added to this three v's and we are calling it at five v's okay so let's study what these five characteristics of big data that is volume variety velocity and veracity and there is one more which is called as valence let's study all of this so the first characteristics of big data is volume large volume we call it as a big data though there is not a specific volume we can say that this above this volume we can consider is it as a big data but it should be around 5 petabyte that at least it should be a 5 petabyte to be considered as big data but you can term as 4 petabyte also as a big data but we normally is a standard is like this no return but normally we consider like this variety we have studied that uh, before the data were only present in excel word relational databases but now there is a huge amount of data through social media sensors log transaction which cannot be handled by a conventional database systems 
I think you must have learned this because we have <laughs> told this a number of times and there is a reason because, uh, for it because it I want it to be imprinted in your mind that what actually the big data is okay so the data which cannot be handled by this conventional databases we studied the three types of data structured semi structured and unstructured data so all there's a variety of these three data in for big data then next is velocity suppose you have a huge data but you cannot access it with a speed let's say if you are taking uh, for 1 gb just for 1 gb you are taking let's say 1 hour then what the use of handling this big data no this big data big data talks about speed you can access the data within minutes one petabyte of data should not take one hour that's the speed okay also the big data that is the Hadoop talk about distributed parallel processing we have studied before that the data should be saved on multiple devices so that the fetching takes place parallelly hence more hands more speed of working would be there so we talk about velocity these are the basic concepts or characteristics of big data volume variety and velocity now another two are being added now one is velocity what velocity is velocity is the truthfulness of our data okay the data which we are gathering should be real okay in it refers to quality and reliability of data fake reviews you have amazon let's just consider one top uh, amazon product you will find a thousand reviews and some of the reviews sh would be 50 liners do you think you buy a product and of let's say five dollars or twenty dollars and you are writing a review of 50 lines i have been teaching courses and which are adding real values and the people students who are really impressed my course don't giving have never given such a let's say 50 lines review okay so definitely these are the paid fake reviews nearly uh, recently the amazon also banned the websites which were promoting the fake reviews they were there was a court case and these websites shut down the customers there was a lot of happening the amazon are doing to curb these fake reviews but what if we get the big data out of this fake reviews and it is wrong you're getting my point this fake review is wrong and we are maintaining our data and we are making analytical reports out of this fake reviews which should be wrong which is wrong actually it's giving a wrong analytical reports out of big data so it there should be a veracity that that is the data should be correct it should be trusted there was a similar case for google flu uh, in case of google flu uh, there actually it was some uh, it was not a major review but as per the google the data they collected they uh, were publishing on website that a big flu has been uh, taken place so a, a lot of uh, you can say disturbance was there because of this news so because the data they were getting were incorrect the next is valence Valence talks about connected data. Valence words comes from the chemistry bonding between atoms. That is the more valence between them, the more stronger they are. Okay. So valence talk about the connected data. For example, hashtags. Hashtags in Twitter. It it won't. It's not an easy task to uh, connect the data between the hashtags. People sometimes use random hashtags, unnecessary hashtags. One post have many hashtags, so to combine the data as per the hashtags is very difficult. Okay, so there should be 
if we talk about big data there should be a connection between the data so only in that case you would be able to make out the analytical reports such as facebook friends if we are taking at random facebook accounts and generating analytical report i don't think it would be helpful we have to generate a relation facebook friends facebook pages person pages person groups person comments comments are not useful if we are talking about not talking about related to a person or a product we are checking for a product how many comments are there there should be a relation there should be a relation between an employee to the employer okay so the variability talks about the data which is connected okay so these two terms that is the velocity and variance that is velocity is the truth of the data truth of the data uh, it actually it has been a major concern these days a lot of uh, what is happening is when i visit sometimes to my friends they are quoting some news that they have read on facebook this okay and they have read something in facebook that but actually it has it is not there it is a fake news because with the invent of this internet everyone can create a website there is not any authenticity of anything you are posting you can make a website of your own and you can just write i am the god or uh, i am doing this i uh, my, i i am the person who is behind i have mount, mounted the mount everest five times i am uh, so much experience blah blah you can write anything and you can post on the facebook is there any authenticity authenticity no there is no authenticity you can write anything you have want so this is the major crisis which is our internet is facing right now even in the uh, india there are some news channels uh, who take the news from these facebook and social media accounts the popular news which are going they actually analyze that news study that news and they try to find out is this real news is real or a fake okay and i'm able to see that most of the popular news which are trending comes out to be the fake ones okay because there is no authenticity so that's what we are saying is the data should be truthful and during the course of the time during the in future days i think it would be the major concern veracity okay the data which we are the big data we are using for analyzing should not be a fake one if you uh this is my course and let's say if i put by any means if i'm able to uh add 100 reviews five star reviews then definitely you will be buying my course but thanks to the platform maybe the udemy or the another they don't allow they have smart algorithms they identify if you do a fake review by a fake account they will identify it and they will delete the review okay because they also know that the fake reviews or something will give incorrect reports the student will buy the false course and they will uh, don't have trust on the platform okay so this veracity and valence valence is the in connected between the data plays a huge amount of role and in the future they would be increasing so let's again characteristics of big data volume variety velocity veracity and valence so just understand these terms and normally in the interviews you can be asked what are the three v's of big data so the main v's are this and these two are now being added because as the big data is increasing during the analysis we have been facing problems so which give a rise to these two v's as well okay so that's all for this session thank you hello friends so you as you already must be aware now that why the hadoop is used for why is big data okay but uh, there are many benefits of using and collecting of big data but it has been a very common interview question that 
give us the advantages of big data Hadoop. So just uh, let's go through the three main points why which the big data is used for. First, the smart decisions. As we are aware that with the analysis of big data, we are able to make the smart decisions. These decisions in period of time return us with a huge investment. Okay, there is an old proverb saying that the customer is king. With the coming of uh, big data, the customer is king is now being changed as data is king. <laughs> That's pretty good because with the help of the data, you know the, uh, the trend is that the companies are not earning with the amount like $100 for the item. No, companies try to sell that product to 100 people with $80. So they are reducing their margin and they are growing their uh, customer base. So with the help of data is king, they are able to grow in database, right, in their sale value. So companies have realized this. It is better to send cheaper product to the larger customers, okay, that the customer base should be large. The another is risk identification. It helps industries, government, medicals to identify the risk early as possible, which in turn saves life and money. Okay. And it is also saying that prevention is better than cure. So risk identification definitely is identifying the risk before that is preventing it than cure. Reliability. Uh, if we talk about Hadoop, uh, the data is reliable. Okay. Uh, it, like if you have stored data in your hard disk, so there are some chances that your hard disk might crash. There are chances during the period of time uh, hard disk stop working. It can be stolen. There can be n number of reasons. But when we are using Hadoop as a data storage, the chances to lose the data are very minimal because for a data, three copies or more copies are made. Okay, so if any one node or one copy is crashed or the server or the machine is crashed, you can still fetch the data. So there's a greater reliability. It's not possible that all the machines stop working at a day in time. No. If you have thousand machines, there will be a scenario that one at a time or two at a time may fail, but not at whole thousand machines. But the data is replicated in case of a boop. Like one data is stored in three devices, maybe in device 100, device 500, device 700. So if the device 100 crashes, you still have data available on device 500 and 700. So the reliability is there. So these points that with the help of uh, big data and Hadoop, you can make smart decisions. You can identify the risk early and the reliability of the data which is being saved. Okay, so you must have been seen that. Uh, you prefer to upload your documents on Google Drive and etc. because you know, Whatever may happen, your data would be secure on Google Drive. Any crash is there, whatever is there, your data is there. Because that is reliability. The reliable factor comes into your mind. Okay. So that was a small session regarding the advantages. Thank you. Hello friends. So this just session is just about uh, of two terms but what is data science and data scientist as you are joined this big data and Hadoop course so you should be aware about these terms so what actually the data science is data science is getting the value out of big data okay that is providing the insight of the data so let us consider an example that what a data science says to the study of a Flipkart. Uh, Flipkart or you can say an Amazon e-commerce website. First, that what is the buyer's behavior? That the buyer wanted to see the items which are in fashion. Buyer is looking for the books. Study of the data science also tell us which products the buyer usually buys. Does he checks the reviews? Does he checks the product is cheap? Does the buyer buys if it's a discounted? So there are many reasons depending about the buyers they buy. Some buyers when they're good reviews, some buy when they're cheap. There can be many reasons. So data science help us to study them. Okay. Do user buy any company related values, products, sorry, 
Okay, so these are all studied in data science. It's an insight to action which is taken by companies by sell product as in our case. Okay, suppose you are traveling to any hill station. So what do you do? You just check on the internet about the hill station weather report. You check how it's in the past during this month. So all the historical data and the real data. Okay, you gather that, that you search that and yeah, you feel that okay, in the next four to five days, the weather is going to be pleasant, then you visit that place. Okay, so data science is just collecting that data and providing insight in the data. So who is the data science? Data scientist is a person who is doing data science activity. Okay, who is undergoing training on big data, new tools and strategy. As I have all already told be before that Hadoop was a one software before, but now it is a called a Hadoop ecosystem. It is the collection of various free tools. Okay, or we can say rather frameworks. So data, big data strategy. What this says that suppose you're given a task, don't just start collecting or gathering all the data. No, all the data is not useful for your analysis. You have to first determine what your business needed, what type of data you want. Is the data you are getting is really worthful to get the analysis of your business? Okay, so there should be analysis of what type of data you want. Don't just start gathering the data. It is called the big data strategy and it is very famous. Okay, and what we can say, it is the main point in the big data uh, field. Because when we are always talking about big data, big data, but we are losing the actual term that we for specific purpose, specific big data is required. We know we are collecting all data, but uh, whether if I want to sell my product on, uh, let's say Amazon, and I'm get, getting the satellite images of the state will be helpful. No, there is no relation in between. We are saying that all the data is helpful, but meaningful data according to your business needs. Okay. So it was just that to get you aware about the data science and the big data strategy. Okay. So I think now it's pretty much that you already know about the big data. So let's move towards the Hadoop. Okay. We will be talking what actually the Hadoop is how the architecture of Hadoop is, how we, how actually the data is stored in the Hadoop. We will be taking the examples of it and then we'll be going the real practical example of working with Hadoop. Okay. So this was the theory part. Next would be the theory part about the architecture and the later sections would be the uh, real hands-on videos. Thank you. Hello friends. So in this section, we will be studying about Hadoop ecosystem. In the previous lectures, we have used this term that Hadoop is not a single software, but it is a collection of softwares. Okay, now what I mean by it's a collection of softwares, we will getting some idea here. Okay, though we will not be going into those such sections because it's an Hadoop basic course and we will be talking about Hadoop only. But though you will get to know that what are other tools which are available and how they work. Okay. So the first point that Hadoop is when you're trying to use Hadoop, it is not that you have a large data and you need to do the analysis and you start using the Hadoop. No. For some data, Hadoop is good and some for not so like for high couple data the Hadoop is not useful okay so the setup of the Hadoop is very tedious and very experienced task okay so you should give a thought that uh, will you be building setting up the Hadoop yourself that is the Hadoop data center or you will be uh, renting some data center Okay, it is just like if you ask a carpenter to build uh, uh, furniture at your home from initials or you can just uh, ask the carpenter to build the uh, furniture at his own site. Just bring them up and integrate or install them on your at your home.
okay so these are the two ways by which hadoop you can work with hadoop now hadoop ecosystem uh, let me give you a rough idea these are the two links if i go to this link bo to go bojo okay you will get a very very good idea what the hadoop ecosystem is okay yeah so this is hadoop ecosystem what we say is this is basically the hadoop we uh, know hadoop is hadoop is of two components map reduce framework and hdfs now here in this ecosystem you will sorry i in this hadoop system you will find various other tools hbase hive piglet and mart machine language apache oz and fume and scoop and the other tools as well now the if you want to see a detail you can find this hadoop ecosystem you see with the hadoop there there are so many integrations now when you are working you uh, according to your needs you set up different different ecosystems let here they have given example of a google facebook and yahoo and linkedin and cloudera these are the five uh, companies which have been using hadoop and they have given you that how hadoop system ecosystem they have been using like for facebook they have been using hypel while in case of yahoo they are not using hypel hadoop is common in everyone okay now there is a integration of other tools like in case of yahoo they are using hbase in case of linkedin they are use volmort so according to the, your needs you can integrate various other components with your hadoop architecture okay they provides various other capabilities so as per your project or company needs you can work with those softwares as well now what those all softwares are there is a very good link of this hadoop ecosystem table so it's a big list as you can see so it gives you all the hadoop systems okay, which are which can be integrated with hadoop you see for key value data model for graph data model for sql databases you can use for sql on hadoop for you can use this for data integration you can use this for service so there are various other other tools for machine language so there are other other tools as per the needs so that's why we have been saying hadoop is just uh, was a major term about 4 to 5 years back now it is called hadoop ecosystem because hadoop is only good when it is integrated with other platforms now with other integrations see hadoop is a small part and all those integrations are working with it see google okay map reduce google is not having hadoop because uh, in the history i think you have we have told you before or you will be learning in the future section that in google google was the first one who, who implemented the map reduce and later on yahoo implemented as uh, hadoop give it name as a hadoop okay so uh, that's all for the hadoop ecosystem Uh, from the next session we will be going in detail what the hadoop is and how the architecture of hadoop is okay thank you hello friends uh welcome in this course we will be studying about the hadoop history and actually what the hadoop is all about okay so let's start with the hadoop is actually a open source framework as we have discussed before which supports two basic things one is it dis it supports the distributed storage and the distributed processing what we mean by distributed storage is that instead of saving the data the data you want to save on hadoop is not just saved at one location but it is stored on many different locations and also copies of its data is saved so that what we mean by say distributed storage so that if one storage fails or crashes you can still retrieve the data the next is distributed pro uh, processing distrib by distributed processing we means that we are not
processing the data at one end that is we are doing parallel processing multiple threads will be executed when you are doing any task there will be multiple threads will be performing that task hence the speed increases so when we are setting up hadoop actually hadoop does not seems that uh, it will be very expensive let's say if i have a system of 100 gb sp space now if i get 1 tb storage let's say uh, if 100 gb sp space hard disk cost me x amount 1 tb will cost me x into uh, let's say 4x amount 5 tb hard disk or storage will cost me 10x amount okay so you can think let's say if i want 100 one petabyte then you can see how many x amounts we will need okay it will be high expensive what i mean to say just uh, give me a few seconds yeah let's say if i want 100 gb then the amount i need is let's say x if i want one terabyte the amount i need is let's say 12x okay instead now how the big data work that instead of having a very big storage it gets a distributed storage okay it said okay 1 tb 12x it's very expensive so what we do instead of 1 tb we will get 10 into 100 gb space okay so what it will cost it will cost around 10x and what would will be cheaper than 12x okay it's a small principle on which the hadoop works okay so what hadoop says that for the hadoop you don't need special servers Hadoop works on community hardware. So what we buy community hardware? Community hardware are our local systems. The systems which we use in our personal need day by day. So those we known as community hardware. So in Hadoop, no special machine is required. Instead, we use the community hardware. Okay. So Hadoop stores the data on community hardware. Okay. It stored at distributed storage that is and distributed programming processing that is parallel at pro so it stores the data parallelly you can say parallelly or also process the data parallelly now we if we talk about hadoop uh, we have two things distributed storage and distributed processing so these are the two terms when we are talking about hadoop here we are not talking about the Hadoop ecosystem which we have studied in previous session. We are just learning about Hadoop as a part. So Hadoop as a part has two components, distributed storage and distributed processing. How we can store the data on Hadoop and how we can process the data on the Hadoop. Okay. So Google in 2003, they come with a, a research paper actually they have so many links and data so so that it can be fetched in seconds so they developed a research paper known as google file system and map reduce and in 2004 they come with a paper that is map reduce so google, what google file system google file system says that it talks about distributed storage that how they can store their data in distributed manner and MapReduce talks about distributed processing that is parallel processing. So this was the research paper which was shared by Google and then a few later after Yahoo implement the Google paper in 2007 and they named at Google file system as Hadoop distributed file system and in 2008 they come up with MapReduce. So originally the initiator was Google, but it was implemented by Yahoo. So let me explain that how the this map reduce uh, you are able to know distributed storage. 
so distributed storage is hadoop distributed file system how we can store files in our storage the next is distributed processing that is map reduce map reduce works on a principle let's say 10 if 10 people can build a house in 100 days then 20 people can build a house in 50 days okay so they increase the number of jobs or processing which are doing those jobs so it is a simple principle which map reduce works on so the initial uh, we can say the creator of Hadoop is John Cutting who named this uh, after his son's toy element so this Hadoop the, his son was having a toy uh, elephant type and he used to call him as a Hadoop so the drawing cutting name this uh, software as Hadoop so mostly people think that Hadoop comes from uh, as Hadoop be, deals with big data and elephant is big so that's why they have opt for this no uh, it was clearly uh, because of his son's toy okay so Hadoop is an open source platform which is managed by Apache softwares okay so Hadoop is just like a software you must have heard of Springs Hibernate frameworks in Java so similarly Hadoop is also a framework which is developed in Java okay so if you have worked with Spring Hibernate you will clearly understand what actually the Hadoop is it is also a framework okay so now it speaks about that yes Hadoop is a Hadoop cluster that is many machines linked together from a Hadoop cluster okay Hadoop is no, uh, we as we have talked in above that Hadoop is not a single machine which is having a large storage and processing no Hadoop is a cluster it is a integration of many what we the term here is commodity hardware this term is real important so Hadoop is a cluster of machine links that machines are community hardware okay so the reason the benefit of such that is as Hadoop follows distributed storage that is it makes the copy on different machines so if one machine crashes also still you can get that data that is your big data is not affected so that's the real power of Hadoop comes and Hadoop is not a database we don't call Hadoop a database but a distributed file system because it is storing your data distributed at distributed locations okay so Hadoop is not a software but is a collection of free software which keeps on adding as we have studied in previous session okay so Hadoop is a small entity in the between and various others tools we are being using like MapReduce, Hive, Pig, Edgebase and others these depend upon your project needs so sometimes they are different projects having different requirements so Hadoop is open source but some companies like IBM others having paid versions of it these added features are not available in free Hadoop yeah the Hadoop is free but sometimes uh, these companies have developed some sections which are paid uh, that you need some uh, Hadoop uh, administration uh, uh, advantage you want to have you can administrator your Hadoop accounts then you can need to buy some paid versions okay so it's a similar thing uh, let's say uh, uh, let's say for my course I give the free previews of one to course and if you want to work with it you have to buy with it okay <laughs> so it's the same it's the same principle on which normally uh, the every industry is working on okay but the Hadoop itself is in open source it's not a just free preview okay so other tools are like Teradata, others are handling big data, but Hadoop is the most and famous choice. Okay. Uh, so, in the above, we were talking that these some companies have developed some versions. Okay. Here we are talking is that instead of Hadoop, there are other softwares also like Teradata, which are very, these tools are also very, uh, you can say, popular. Uh, but, uh, they are not Hadoop but they still handle big data so there are other tools available in the market also 
which handle the big data so it's not only just the hadoop so hadoop has two main parts okay so as we have discussed first is the storage and another is the processing on data which is stored so what is it the hadoop distributed file system storage part that is stores data in hadoop cluster hence making a distributed file system okay uh, don't worry uh, we will be taking in detail what is hadoop file system and actually how these files are stored and the another is map reduce processing part that is assign works to node in hadoop cluster so these two uh, sections there will be a separate sections uh, dealing how they are and how actually they work in hadoop okay so hadoop follows a master slave model okay hadoop says you can write once and read any numbers of times hadoop don't change content of a file like in case of databases relational or conventional databases you have the data stored and there is a update query you can send an update as sql command and you can update the data but in hadoop it's not as a database the data which is stored in hadoop distributed file system can be fetched but it cannot be updated there okay and the another point says always have reliable hardware for job tracker and name node because if they crashes hadoop is in problem okay i think that section needs to be covered in next when we talk about hadoop distributed file system anyhow let me give a brief idea that uh, what it means to say that yes hadoop works on community hardware community hardware are the normal hardware which we use in daily use daily personal and uh, office nodes but it's saying and they are not reliable they can crash easily because they are the cheap uh, machines but uh, what it means to say uh, the mind of the hadoop okay this is the job tracker and the name node these are the master as we have seen that hadoop works in the master slave model so hadoop master are job tracker and name node so they are present on a machine and it's saying that machine should be of good configuration and it should not be a community community hardware okay so it's saying it should be a high reliable hardware it should not crash it should be not be a cheap hardware okay so let me give you an exa view that how the racks of big data looks like see so these are the racks of big data okay hadoop which are placed you can see this uh, you can give let me show you yeah see this is the room and the racks are placed here these are the community hardwares you see the rack here so this is actually the how the hadoop works you see this one this one okay they are moving they are adding memory okay as you see the facebook and these uh, as the data is continuously growing so they are adding petabytes i think this whole rack will be around 1 petabyte of storage so they are increasing the storage of their hadoop cluster okay so i think that is all sufficient you must have got a pretty good idea what the hadoop is hadoop is uh, uh generally made up of two components one is hadoop distributed file system and map reduce distributed file system stores the data or uh, okay is responsible for storing the data and map reduce is responsible for processing part of that data so hadoop was generally invented by kris dong and he named it after his son stoy elephant Hadoop origin was from Google Doc uh, research paper released in 2003 and the Yahoo implemented it in 2007 and 8 with the name of HDFS and MapReduce. So that's all that's all for the Hadoop and from the next sessions we'll be talking about the architecture of Hadoop and how this HDFS and MapReduce works. Okay? Thank you. Uh, hello friends so let's start with a very big topic that is a hadoop distributed file system commonly we say as a hdfs okay so before learning hadoop file system let's study about what actually the distributed file system is and then we can switch to hadoop file system so what hadoop file system is, oh sorry what a distributed file system is 
it follows a master slave model what we mean by saying is master slave model is there is a master who is managing all the activities and the slave who is performing all the activities master is deciding that what you need to do and where you need to do and slave is actually the person who is performing the activity or saving doing that activity okay no just compare it as a real life model of a master slave what it used to be so in distributed file system data is stored on server client can work with data as it is locally stored in his machine in distributed file system i am sitting on my machine i don't have the data with me but it is located on the server but i can work with the data as it is in my machine let's say the data if i am in windows the data is present in my d disk d hard disk d drive so but in case of distributed file system there must be an another drive let's say fg or something and i am working with it as it is locally stored that is it is my drive d so you don't know that actually you are working with a distributed file system server has to handle if multiple request as the same data comes so if a data is stored let's say a file or image is stored in a distributed file system and so there can be a case that at the same time five person must trying to access that same file so distributed file system must be capable to handle multiple request to the same data okay and server has to be sure user receives the most updated data let's say instead of uh, image file it had been a word document and four persons are working on that uh, word document simultaneously they are some are reading and some are updating that file so it needs to be fi distributed file system have to make sure that every user is viewing or updating the latest copies okay so that data is not lost so that was all about the distributed file system now let's come back to hadoop distributed file system if we talk uh, say about the normal distributed file system or we consider our computer our personal computer so we have the data is stored in the blocks okay in a hard disk and that blocks each block is capable of storing 4k of data that is 4 kilobytes so what we do in case of hadoop file system a layer is maintained over the storage and it increases this block size to 64 mb okay so the minimum or the amount of data which can be stored at this i'm really sorry guys so the minimum amount of data which can be stored in this block is increased to 64 so there is specifically a reason uh, the reason is that the what the hadoop file system is it is uh, generating a list or you can say it has a metadata which have all the information uh, of its cluster where which data is stored so if we make it as 4kb so that file the meta file would be of let's say a, a very big file so to make it small and the processing can be faster we have made the block size it as 64 okay uh, or also in the conventional or in the distributed file system this 4k suppose there is a block size of 4k and you added a uh data of 3k so 1k space is not available okay for another data to be stored so the minimum data which can be stored was of 4k while in case of hadoop file system as the block size of 64 so suppose you is installed or save 1 mb of data so 63 mb is still left so which can be used by another data okay so that was a rough idea about hadoop file system let's go with some diagram okay I give a short uh, what it actually is okay so this is your hdfs and here we have racks of 
okay we have seen the racks that is the data storage these are the racks of storage okay maybe this is one rack uh, that is one petabyte of storage let's say assume it and you have multiple hardwares here what we say is commodity hardwares okay so it can be hardware one present hardware two hard sorry one hardware two hardware three and similarly there on one rack there can be multiple hardwares so let's make it 10 so what we will say it we will say it rack one okay okay and this is your rack two this is your rack three and this is your rack four so if this is your hadoop file system and uh, just a second so there can be multiple number of racks here and each rack has multiple community hardware associated okay so this is how the uh, our hdfs looks like okay so these are the machines and in on a rack there can be various machines and multiple racks are connected also these rack communicates with each other okay so if i say these racks are connected to each other that is this rack or you can say this computer can communicate with the another computer in this rack so similarly all these racks are connected so that is our hadoop distributed file system so the data are stored in these clusters okay so that was all for hadoop distributed file system in the next section we will see the or overall the hadoop architecture is okay thank you hello friends so in this lecture we will see the components of hadoop okay so uh, that or we can say the architecture of the hadoop so we have seen that how the hadoop cluster look like we have the racks and the corresponding community hardwares these racks are interconnected uh, okay so uh, you we know two terms okay one is hdfs that is hadoop distributed file system sorry okay and the another one is map reduce so there are various components under it so the first component under the hadoop distributed file system is name node okay the another one is secondary node and we have the data node okay and in the map reduce we have job tracker and we have the task tracker as we have studied that in hdfs what the hdfs does it it is responsible for storing the file in your distributed file system while in case of map reduce it is responsible for processing the data stored in distributed file system we have already seen that this hadoop file system is uh, or uh, hadoop is a master slave model so master is someone who is giving the orders and slave is one who is performing the activity 
so these components are divided into master slave so let's if we talk about master so we have name node and secondary node as master okay. we have data node similarly here so the data node is slave okay job tracker is master and task tracker is safe so this is the main or we can say all over of the hadoop file system so we all we will be talking in hadoop will be related to these five terms name node secondary node data node and job tracker and task tracker let's come back to our hadoop architecture so these are our computers this is computer one this is computer two okay so we say in every computer or in every system we have one data node and one task node okay so what i mean is we have one data node plus one task node sorry one task tracker okay so everywhere we have data node task tracker so in every computer a data node data node is responsible for storing of the data in this computer and task tracker is a job you can say a cpu or which is responsible for performing this activity uh, suppose there is data stored on this computer so task tracker is responsible for processing that data on that computer so similarly every computer which is saved on this cluster has one task node and one task tracker if we talk about overall hadoop okay uh, just a second yeah and we have one name node and one job tracker also we have a just a second guys we have a secondary node okay. so we have seen that our hadoop works in master slave model so if when any activity is there master will tell the slave so who are slave okay where actually the real data is being stored real data is being stored on these computers okay so these have a slave so data node will store the location and task tracker will perform that location so similarly there are multiple data nodes and multiple task tracker so these are all slaves let me light here these are all slaves and there is a name node and job tracker name node manages all the data nodes okay it is data node manages all data node or name node and job tracker manages all task tracker so name node is the master it is a master for all the name nodes and job tracker is a master for all the task tracker so if this hadoop if this is a client if this are a client 
and he needs to perform any task so he will contact to whom it will contact it will contact the name node okay name node will decide okay how he want to store the data suppose he identified some machine where data needs to be stored so he name node is a master then what it will do it will communicate this cluster of racks and it will tell correspondingly okay on this machine let's say this is machine one he says okay data node of machine one please store this data so this data node will comes into actual picture it is a slave it will be the real one who will be performing the activity okay and it will storing the data here similarly for job tracker if a client wants some processing needs to be done what it will do it will communicate to data job tracker okay it will say the jahe job tracker i need to perform this task job tracker would say okay he do some calculation uh, and he says okay the data is located here we will be studying how this actually work i am just giving a rough idea how the data nodes and what are the activities of job tracker the real stuff how the data will be manipulated will be studying in later sections okay so the job tracker what will do he needs to process the task so he suppose if he identifies that your data is located on this machine and somewhere this machine so he will contact corresponding task tracker of both these machine and will ask them to perform some activity okay so name node communicates with the data node name node is a master who order the data node to perform the activity similarly the job tracker is a master who asks the task tracker to perform the activity this name node and the data node is responsible for saving of data or moving of data in hadoop file system so we call them as hdfs while case of this job tracker and task tracker are responsible for parallel processing and processing of the data so they come under map reduce okay now there is also one term secondary node so what this actually is this name node is storing all the location okay it has all the information what data is stored on which machine okay so as it is a master master usually saves all the information so it has all the information in the hadoop cluster where the data is stored but what if in some case this crashes you must have studied uh, in the previous section uh, we have taught that this name node and job tracker need to be reliable hardware okay uh, we are showing this name node and job tracker different but actually what it is this name node and job tracker they are also a computer okay it is also a computer like this which is present let's say there is a computer present like this here which is serving as a master and this name node and job tracker present in it this is the actual but in but for the sake of pre presentation i'm showing them different but actually this name node and job tracker are also a computer which is present here okay and it needs to be highly reliable because we don't want this machine to be crashed these are community hardwares that are cheap computers but this is not a cheap it is a really good computer a reliable computer which we don't need to break down okay so all the information where the data is saved uh, on which data node is handled by name node but what if this crashes so what we do normally after r this name node sends all its data to secondary node okay set data no secondary node usually uh, filter them sort them and save a copy of it in it itself okay and response back to data node so this activity is performing every r so in future also let's say if this data node crashes we have all our information present on data node on this secondary node sorry so that's why we are say that hadoop is really a secured platform okay uh, also uh, one thing is that 
if something is crashed you can retrieve it from that secondary node also hadoop works is that there is some data so data needs to be stored so client talks to name node hey name node hey hadoop uh, hdfs file system i need to store this data so one important thing in hadoop is that it makes a copy let's say it stored that copy here it will store some copy here and it will also store a copy here so for every copy it has for every data it maintains three copies you see this is happening for all the data so if in the future if some computer crashes we can still retrieve the data so that's why we say the hadoop system is very reliable in case of crashes anything crashes you have a backup which is available and you will find your data so that is really the hadoop overall architecture let's go once again we have hadoop distributed file system in which we have name node secondary node which acts as a master okay this one we have data nodes which acts as a slave which is present on every computer and which is really performing the activity of saving the data on each computer map reduce in which this is the job tracker which acts as a master and the task tracker which is present on each and every community hardware and it is working as a slave okay secondary node maintains the copy of all the data which is present on main node and for each file hadoop actually makes three copies of it so that in case of there is a crash hadoop file system is very reliable okay and the data is not lost so that is all over the architecture of hadoop um in let's sections let's discuss how the actual actual data is being saved on this okay thank you hello friends so in the previous sections you have learned about the hadoop architecture how uh, the hdfs and map reduce components are present and where they are present and how they communicate but uh, let's discuss more about map reduce what actually the map reduce is so originally the map reduce was developed by google in 2004 when they published a paper as we have discussed in a previous section so they developed it because uh, google published paper for how to store large data across web because google is having so much less data and to process them it will help them in indexing and searching the data in few seconds because you can know that in just when you in google search hit enter in a few seconds the websites are shown and it's not that the websites are shown they are indexed okay the top websites comes on the first page and accordingly so uh, indexing and searching is a very important and big task which is done in few seconds with the help of map reduce do now various uh, uh, papers and implementation of map reduce exists but original it was done by google so do map reduce large amount of data can be processed in parallel we see that how the google is using map reduce and giving the results in just few seconds okay so when we talk about map reduce it actually of two terms map and reduce map is perform for what actually in map is done it's perform the sorting and filtering and converting into key value pairs and in case of reduce it perform on data processed on map that whatever the map activity has done it work on the data or the output of the map is fed as the input of the reduce and the operations like counting etc are done okay so uh, we won't be going much depth into this uh, map reduce what actually is actual okay so just but see a uh, one very good uh, website which has shown what actually this map reduce is okay uh so what this website says that uh, suppose you are throwing a party and this party 
and in this party you uh, there are your friends who said okay we will be helping you in cook the food uh, then you said okay so you hand over some items tomatoes onions and garlics to each of your friend a uh, uncalculated amount okay so what the map is that uh, each of your friends actually cutting those vegetables shuffle is that you are collecting all those vegetables in different groups because each friend has tomato different quantity so you are collecting them and what the reduce means that out of those collected you are taking a ball of tomato and putting all those tomato in that so similarly for the other items so in the map you were actually performing the activity and in reduce you were just collecting them okay or you are counting them hundred how much calculate a total value it is and each product in each bowl okay it's a very good example of map reduce uh, so map reduce framework used in dfs distributed file system to process data in parallel so that the task can be completed at much faster rate we know hadoop hadoop is used for saving a large amount of data but yes if we say we have hdfs we are successfully able to store data but if we are not able to retrieve that data in few seconds would you be using hadoop okay suppose hadoop is uh, you are working with hadoop and let's say to fetch a file or do some activity let's say you want to fetch uh, something some data and it's taking let's say 15 minutes will you be using it no you won't be using it you want as soon as you need the data it is present before you so map reduce framework helps you to complete that task in a few seconds uh, in a very fast rate so let's go through some of the benefits of map reduce it's simple map reduce jobs can be written in many languages what is map reduce map reduce is a algorithm is a program which is performing your task suppose you, there is a data and you need to some fetch the data or you need to perform some activity it's a map reduce job okay so this job can be reduced in multiple languages if we talk about hadoop you can write this job in multiple languages scalable what we mean by scalable that petabytes of data can be processed under one cluster okay we have seen that hadoop cluster a large number of petabytes are there so using this map uh, ma in map reduce all these petabytes can be processed under one cluster speed days of work can be done by map reduce in minutes petabytes of data can be analyzed very quickly okay recovery fault tolerance hadoop yes hadoop is has been popular that it doesn't lose your data okay so similarly in the recovery in case of error or fault or system crash there is a fault tolerance mechanism with the map reduce that is you always get your data okay processing at data node machine uh, the real benefit of this uh, map reduces what are the components of map reduce this job tracker and task tracker so using this map reduce you can actually work the uh, processing at this map tracker task okay so who is performing the activity slaves so that's the real benefit okay processing at data machines these machines this task tracker is actually performing the activity so what we say map reduce has two components job tracker and task tracker we have studied this before okay this job tracker works as a master and this task tracker works as a slave so there was a sum about this map reduce hope you get an idea in the later section we will be actually studying how the data how actual working of hadoop is going on how the data is moving how we are fetching the data okay thank you i will see you in the next lecture hello friends so i think uh, we have got a really good idea what actually the hadoop architecture is now this section we will be going step by step how the actual working of hadoop is okay so let me open the diagram and we'll explain you logically how it is going 
let's say this is the client or let's say this is the you and you want to store the data and you want to store the data of let's say file size of 128 MB we have already said that file uh, that the block storage in a Hadoop is of 64 MB okay so we roughly assume 128 MB if it has been 129 MB then three blocks would be needed now if it, uh, we will be needing two machines that is two blocks let's say two machines two blocks would be good to say okay so what we do now this you want to store and you contact the Hadoop hey this is your Hadoop so you go to the Hadoop and you say hey Hadoop I want to store this file Hadoop says okay the activity you want to do is want to saving of a file so let me transfer you to the master of HDFS that is name node so it moves you to the name node name node say okay you need two files okay so uh, he assigns the master node assigns the computer let me name the computers as well mm, with a red color let's say this is computer one two two three let's say six uh, let's say this machine name is 33 34 35 30 sorry 35 36 okay so now so name node analyzes and say okay you need to store two blocks okay that is one block you save it on machine one you save it on machine 33 and you save it on machine 75 okay let's say this is your machine 75 76 77 78 this is your machine 22 okay and you save your second block on machine let's say 3 22 and 78 okay so you see for every block it is repeated on three machines this the data in this is saved in the it's in one machine one machine 33 and 75 similarly the block two so three copies for every data three copies are saved so name node maintains a metadata it's a file okay let's say in some this color it's this is known as a metadata so what is the metadata metadata is the data about data so metadata is a file which is saved by this name node which shows that which data is present on which computer okay so it's update its metadata and send back this data to the uh, these wires okay and to this racks so now the data corresponding the respective machine data node let's say for block one this data node is connect contacted this data node is contacted and this data node is contacted these three data nodes come into picture and they save the data on their respective machines okay and similarly for block two it will be saved on let's say machine 3 22 and 78 so this is how the data is actually saved let's say in the future if this node 1 crashes okay and you want to retrieve the data so from where you can retrieve the data you can retrieve the data from 33 and 75 name node also came to know that the computer is crashed and it make a copy let's say on this 6 so it moved the data from 33 to the computer 6 so again three copies are safe so this is how the Hadoop is maintaining the data and in case of system crashes 
the data is reliable you always able to retrieve the data okay so that is all how the hdfs work now see the next part okay suppose i client wants to do any task okay that he want to perform some activity we have studied for performing some activity it is usually done in map reduce okay a program is made clients make a program and he says okay i want to do this task he write a programming load of one thing on he do a 10 kb of file is prepared okay so it contact the hadoop it says hadoop i want to process some data so hadoop analyzes okay as he want to process some this data let's contact the job tracker so it contact the job tracker okay so the job tracker consults name node and identify the data nodes available so what the job tracker does he says okay you want to perform the activity on the data you stored but job tracker don't know where the data is stored so the job tracker contact the name node hey name node can you give me the details of this user where his data is stored name node sees the data data and responds back the job tracker okay so the job tracker identifies near task tracker near to the data node okay so this job tracker identify okay the data is stored is this 1 33 and 75 so who will be processing this data at the slash will be this this task tracker so he identifies the task tracker which is present near to these machines it can be this task tracker also if these are not free so the near one maybe on machine 2 okay or machine 22 so it identifies the task tracker which can perform this activity uh, that is through the map reduce okay let's say uh, if this data or this processing how many uh, parts this processing would be done the processing needs to be done on two blocks so the map the task will be broken into two jobs okay the map would be two because two the task on two blocks needs to be done okay so the job tracker identified okay for the node one this task tracker would be used and to perform on the second node this task tracker would be used so the data okay the programming logic of 10 kb would be divided into two parts for processing at both the data nodes at 1 and 3 no task tracker match then it tries to find another machine on same rack than another rack so it is saying the previous task suppose this task tracker is not available so what the job tracker will do it will first identifies on the same rack if another task tracker can be found if not then it will search for the next rack task tracker continuously send heard beat back to job tracker if no heard beat is received by job tracker then another task tracker is scheduled now how the this works that the job tracker knows this task tracker is working fine or not in every 3 3 seconds this task tracker is sending a heard beat to job tracker that i am working fine okay and i am available okay if a heard beat is sent every 3 seconds job tracker waits for 10 sec 10 heard beats of a time and then think either the machine is dead or slow so it assigns block of block to some another task tracker so it way if let's say this uh, this machine is doing heavy work and it's go slow so it is not able to send heard beat after 3 seconds or maybe this machine crashes so this job tracker wait for 10 heard beats let's say for then it would be 10 30 seconds if he doesn't receive the heard beat then it assigns that task to some another machine that is to another task tracker the first preference would be on the same rack if not then it will select the another rack okay sometimes task tracker along with the heard beat sent that we have some more space for job processing so you can assign more work okay it's self explanatory it may be a case a single task tracker is performing multiple jobs for client 
there can be process that a single task tracker can be handling multiple processes. Task tracker copies data to a specific data node and also perform map and reduce function in parallel. Okay, so it's also the task tracker copies the data if it is on different it process moves the data and process it. So there as we have studied that there are two operations one is map okay and the another is reduce we have studied in previous section so first of all let's say in map uh, we want to perform this activity on this data so it break into two maps performing here and here <coughs> sorry so first the map of corresponding this one is performed and map of this one is performed and they notify the job tracker Okay, so when the job tracker identifies that all the task trackers has completed their map reduce map job, then they goes for the reduce job. When job is completed, task tracker updates job tracker. Client can get status of the job anytime through job tracker. When this processing is going on, then client want to fetch the details how much data is processed, so he can just contact the job tracker and get the details when the processing is going on a percentage is showing on how many percentages completed and other stuff okay so number of input spread clients break down data in equal number of mappings this is what we have seen that it is break equally number of maps is equal to the number of input files and number of reduce is equal to the number of output files so when the reduce activity is done reduce activity is done it uh, calculate the output and it's stored on some machine let's say on this machine this output is stored okay and this output this information is sent to job tracker that the reduce has performed the activity and stored at this computer the output result and the job tracker updates the name node that the output is stored at this location you update your metadata and similarly the client is informed and he can fetch the result from this computer okay so that is all the working of Hadoop on which we can say brief working of Hadoop how it works the data is stored with HDFS and it is reduced uh, and it's processed with map reduce map is broken as the number of blocks or sections and reduce uh, in this our case the reduce is one job okay because one output file is produced okay so that was all I think uh, that was all for this our course which is the introduction to Hadoop and big data uh, if you need more knowledge you can go for the advanced courses uh, it is more than sufficient if we talk about the basics of Hadoop uh, there we have added one more section because uh, we thought uh, if you don't do a practical you won't uh, able to learn okay so we had some practical sessions the real working of HDFS and MapReduce okay so go through it and do some practicals thank you Hello friends, so this is the first session in the Hadoop practical. So till now you have got in good idea what the big data is, what the Hadoop is, what is the architecture of Hadoop, what is Hadoop file HDFS that is, what is map reduce, how the actual implementation of files into the HDFS and how the map reducing works okay so that was all theoretical we tried to explain it with the help of example but uh, if we can uh, this course is introduction so this was sufficient but we thought to give you slight knowledge of the practical how the head working is so we are adding this practical session so